When I was growing up, my dad would tell me these stories about fishing beautiful high elevation beaver ponds in the 80s. He would tell me about these meadows intertwined with spruce thickets that could only be compared to the mountains out west. He always told me I should go back and check them out and see if there were still any fish in them. So, finally, 40 years after my dad had fished the exact same spot, I decided to return and see if those very same beaver ponds still had trout in them. Welcome back to another video. I'm doing something in this video that I would normally never do this time of the year, and that is I'm at like super high elevation, and I'm fishing a part of a creek that I've not really fished before, and I'm trying out some of these little beaver ponds, at least at first. I'm gonna try to fish some beaver ponds, and then move on down the creek to where it kind of looks more like an actual creek, and then just try to catch some fish. Um, I don't have really high expectations. I don't have very good luck with beaver dams, but I thought it'd be something fun, something different, and yeah, I mean, why not? Some places are just like incredible for the scenery alone, and I like to just hike in them. But it's impossible for me to go hiking and not have a fishing rod when I'm next to a creek that I know has native brook trout in it. So, native brookie fishing. And coming up in late December, and it's like 65 degrees at like, who knows how much, how many feet in elevation we're at right now. So, yeah, I would normally never be able to do that this time of the year. This is definitely more of like a strictly, uh, uh, you know, summertime thing, but I'm getting the privilege to be able to do this in December. So let's see if we can catch some fish, fingers crossed. Let's go! <laughs> I didn't even know if we were shot in this place. That's amazing, dude. Oh my gosh. I'm so happy right now. I'm fishing these like little beaver dams up here, guys. And I never really fished it before. I know that it's possible for a brook trout to survive in beaver dams, especially at high enough elevations. And I just found one. Look at that, guys. Beaver dam, high elevation beaver dam rookie in December. <laughs> he came up and hit the dry fly twice, but I thought he might be a minnow. Got a little scar on his head. What an awesome little fish, man. What an awesome little fish. Always unhooked. Let's see if I can get an underwater release of him. All right, guys, so I'm sitting here. I fished another couple beaver ponds. I have one more right here, which is the last beaver pond for a while, I think because it looks like it turns into a regular creek in here. Um, I'm gonna try it real quick, but before we get into that, I wanted to just tell you guys that uh, the video is sponsored by Postfly. So, first of all, huge shouts out to Postfly because, uh, you know, sponsorships like this is what enables me to continue to come out here and fish like this and um, make cool trips and make better videos for you guys. So, first of all, I wanted to thank them for that. Uh, second thing is, just get into Postfly. If you guys don't know, it is a subscription fly box. It has all sorts of goodies in it. I used this exact fly box for, or this exact post fly box for the last video, last sponsored video. And the last sponsored video, I was fishing for rainbow trout and we were urinating. In this video, I am fishing for high elevation brook trout in a beaver pond. And the box works in both places. Um, they have three, or I'm sorry, they have four boxes. They have trout, uh, salt water, and warm water, which is bass and salmon or steelhead. And they even have, uh, a fly tying box for those of you who want to, you know, get into fly tying. So yeah, go check them out. Use code uh, Hardman PFB, which is Hardman PFB Post Fly Box, in your checkout and get ten dollars off your Post Fly Box. Um, I'm sitting here trying to decide which fly I want to tie on out of this box. 
I think I might try like a little Copper John or something flashy, I think, is what I'm gonna go with. But along those lines, these flies are picked out by guides and professional anglers. So no matter where in the country you are, they'll get you flies that'll work for you in your geographic location, and they'll catch fish everywhere. Like I've caught some, oh, my leg's falling asleep. I've caught some rainbow trout. I've caught a few brook trout on now so far. So check out Post Fly Box. Get you one, link description. And uh, let's keep trying to catch fish. We'll try this beaver pond right here. And then after that, I'm just gonna drop down. Cause I'm gonna show you what the creek looks like below these beaver, font, beaver ponds. And it's not too impressive. I mean, it's kind of sandy, slow, you know, not looking good. So I'm gonna drop way, way down. It is, it's 120, but realistically I have like two hours left of fishing, if I'm being honest, cause it's that time of the year where it like gets dark at four, especially when it's cloudy. So I'm gonna shut up, just tied on a new post fly, fly, post fly, box fly, little copper john, and yeah, let's see what we can do. It's my second rookie, second high elevation. Look at that little fella. It's my second little high elevation uh, beaver pond brook trout. Beautiful little fella. Not very big, but boy, he's got some colors on him. Thanks, friend. Man, it is incredible that they live up here. It is incredible. And I just laid down my reel in like the nastiest junk unimaginable. Actually guys though, I'm gonna show you something real quick too here. Not 100% sure, but there is a light spot right there. You see that? Um, I'm not entirely sure that that's not a red from a brook trout. Just because it looks extremely out of place. And uh, it's actually why I was fishing this particular pond is because I saw that and I was like you know what if that's a red that means there's definitely brook trout in here and it's after spawn so it's not like I mean I didn't catch it off the red but it's after spawn so I was like well why not try it if there's a brook trout that spawned in here then they have to be here somewhere and lo and behold there was well I think I'm just gonna move down because I don't have a whole lot of time left to fish but I definitely have to keep these beaver ponds in mind next time I go, next time I come here. As you can see, this one doesn't really have any bottom to it. It's like a lot of like mossy stuff. The other thing is a lot of these beaver ponds, like they're ephemeral. Actually, I don't know if that's the right word. I'm kind of running a brain fart on what word I'm trying to use, but uh, basically these, they move constantly. Like if there's a big water event or a big flood event, it might knock these ponds out and the fish might move downstream or they might move upstream, so. They're really random on how they fish. And usually I don't have any luck at all. So the fact that I caught two in this, these little beaver ponds is quite incredible. And especially on a December degree, December day to catch anything is pretty impressive. So I'm gonna move down and uh, yeah, let's fish some actual creek looking stuff. Got him. Biggest fish of the day! Dang it! Dang on it, son. Alright guys, so I just found a big, big beaver pond. And this is far bigger than anything I've been fishing up to this point. And look, there's a, there's the beaver's home. Got a little hut here. Living their lives to the fullest. 
Look at that. Looky there, looky there, looky there. Hmm. Wonder if anybody's home. The world may never know. All right, guys, so I walked for a while down this creek and I finally got to a spot where I felt like um, the water was big enough and kind of what I wanted to fish this time of year. I was fishing some of these creeks and I realized that, I didn't realize it, I kind of knew it, but it's just like, I learned that the fish were really, really, really focusing on the deepest holes. And I felt like, you know, once I got below those beaver dams, there wasn't really any big holes. So I've been looking for them and finally found a few holes in here that looked halfway decent, but I had to walk a lot further than I thought I was gonna have to walk. So, uh, in other words, I'm rapidly running out of time. I need to catch some fish, some fish. Well guys, I just spotted a brook trout here. It's a, uh, there's a log here. He's sitting like, he's actually on a flat rock behind the log. I'm gonna cast at him just cause I'm interested in seeing how he reacts to this. Cause I haven't had any hits in a minute. I'm just somewhat interested. That's not it, but. He's not interested in the dry fly. Not surprising, I guess. We gotta figure out how to get that. Got him. No! No, 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 no! Dude, that's a way bigger fish than it looks like. A way bigger fish. See so if he hits it again out of curiosity. Yep, he's going for it. Got it. Twice in a row, dude. I did not think this brook trout was that big. Let's go! Jeez, dude, he's sitting on, he's laying on this flat rock right here, which you guys probably can't see it very well, but look at the colors on that fish. Wow, that's impressive. Let's go, man. I'm, I'm happy that I saw that fish. Did not want the dry fly, but he fell for the post fly box copper john. All right, guys, this fish is incredible. I want to show the colors off on this one. God, the water's cold. Look at that fish. Come on, focus. Look at the colors. See how his tail's like really red or pinkish looking? It's definitely a fish that's just finished spawning. But what an incredible looking fish. I mean, does it get much better than that? I'm gonna go ahead and unhook him and then, yeah, get a release for him. All right, so I'm quickly realizing that, um, one, I'm running out of time to fish. It's four o'clock and I still have quite a hike out of here. Um, but two, my experience with like winter fishing especially is that even if it's warm you've got about a oof maybe a four hour window or so to catch fish maybe five as in like usually from about 10 11 o'clock to about two or three o'clock is about your limit you can catch fish before that and after that but it gets uh dramatically harder or more difficult especially when like earlier i was kind of sight fishing for some of the fish in this creek down lower and i can't even see in the water now and my dry fly is sinking at this point and it's just like i can't even really see well enough to retie it at this point so i guess basically what i'm saying is i'm probably gonna end this video here and i'm gonna hike out of here so that i don't get like stuck down here in the dark but yeah i hope you guys enjoyed uh go check out post fly box use code hardman pfb at checkout for ten dollars off as i said they have uh four different types of boxes they've got uh you know uh, trout they've got warm water they've got salt and uh, they've got uh, salmon, and they've also got a, a fly tying box with tutorial videos and everything else. So go check them out, go get a box, help show support to the channel, and um, hope you guys have enjoyed this video. A little bit unique, the, the beaver pond portion of the video is a little bit unique, this is kind of normal. Oh, and by the way, real quick, the reason I'm wearing this orange hat and stuff, is because it is still deer season, and I'm on public land, and I actually ran into two guys that were muzzleloader hunting on the way down in here to go fishing. Um, they didn't see anything and quite frankly when it's this warm this time of the year it does not help you out for deer hunting So, you know, shout out to all the hunters out there that are still grinding it out trying to fill a tag And I'm sitting here creek fishing because I've pretty well given up on my season, but uh Yeah, hope you guys enjoyed the video Don't forget to like comment subscribe and I'm gonna Hopefully hike out of here before it gets pitch black. So Peace